Now, many of them have been detained for more than 10 years. None have ever been tra charged or tried. And although more than half of them have been cleared for release, they remain locked up. No wonder Guantanamo Bay has been described as a scandal which shames the Oval Office. More than 40 of the camp's 166 inmates are now on a hunger strike that has lasted for more than two months. One is reported to have lost a quarter of his body weight. Our international editor, Lindsay Hilsom, reports. They're refusing to eat it. Pictures released by the US Department of Defense show the food on offer at Guantanamo Bay. But more than 40 inmates have been on hunger strike for two months now. The US military denies that guards mistreated Korans as alleged, but the inmates' other grievance is undeniable. They have no idea when, if ever, they'll be freed, even those who've been cleared for release. Amongst them, Shakar Amar, a British citizen, cleared for release in 2007, but still held. And Samir Naji al Hassan Mokbel, a Yemeni, who wrote an account of his detention published in today's New York Times. The only reason I'm still here is that President Obama refuses to send any detainees back to Yemen. This makes no sense. I'm a human being, not a passport, and I deserve to be treated like one. I do not want to die here. But until President Obama and Yemen's president do something, that's what I risk every day. Most of Reprieve's clients have been cleared for release. Um, many of these men had habeas trials, which meant many years ago, back when trials were still ongoing with Guantanamo, the government came and said, um, you know, you can, you can protest why you're being here. So we protested. We went through the court system in the States. They would win or they would lose. It didn't matter. If they win, they didn't get out. And if they lost, they didn't get out. They're just stuck there. A total of 779 men have been detained in Guantanamo Bay since it opened in 2002. 166 are still there. 46 of them have been designated for indefinite detention without charge or trial. 86 have been cleared for release but are still being held. Most of the 43 on hunger strike are in this category. In 2006, Channel 4 News snatched a shot of the chair to which hunger strikers are tied to be force-fed. This is a 12 French feeding tube. It's uh, smaller than an average straw. This is placed down the nose, okay, into the stomach where the nutritional support is provided, liquid, liquid-wise. Today, 11 hunger strikers are undergoing force-feeding. Remember this? 2008 as President Obama came to power. I intend to close Guantanamo and I will follow through on that. Five years on, the Department of Defense is releasing pictures of prisoners exercising to show Guantanamo is not so bad. And President Obama seems to have given up on closing it down. Inmates are allowed to pray together. But on Saturday, some resisted when guards tried to move them from communal facilities to solitary cells. The guards fired non-lethal rounds. The American government may have been hoping that everyone would forget about the detainees, but the hunger strikers and their lawyers are pushing Guantanamo Bay back up the political agenda. Lindsay Hilson, we're joined now from New York by Omar Farah of the Center for Constitutional Rights. He represents several Guantanamo Bay prisoners. Omar Farah, is there any chance that this could be some kind of a turning point? Or will it require the death, maybe even of one of your own clients? It's an extremely chilling thought, but, um, but the question has to be asked at this point. Uh, just last year, a prisoner died after being cleared three times by the Bush administration and then the Obama administration. His name was Adnan Latif. You have to ask, would the president have done something differently if he had foreseen that death? Uh, I hope for the men who are there now that he would have. But at, at this time, it, it looks as though the Department of Defense's reflex to defend its detention practices at Guantanamo Bay is dictating their, their actions rather than a genuine attempt to resolve the issues that underlie this hunger strike, not just the uh, regressive uh, treatment of the prisoners, the crackdown, the searches of the Quran, but also the existential torment that 11 years of indefinite detention without charge or trial when more than half of the prisoners are cleared for release produces. And what, I know from what my are, experience what are, meeting with men like Fahad Ghazi and Tarek Baoda 
Well, what are that, the that that, what, that what is the is, danger? Is Forgive me, butting in, but what is the danger that your client or one of the other prisoners will die in the foreseeable future? The Center for Constitutional Rights represents a man named Ghalib al-Bahani. He's on hunger strike. He's also a severe diabetic, and he's been told expressly that the hunger strike poses a real risk to his life. We are very concerned that the current hunger strike will lead to the tragic death of one of the prisoners. The, the practice of force-feeding the prisoners is not a solution. It will not preserve the lives of the prisoners. It's far too uh, a serious and risky situation for such a a brutal and callous response. The, the president has to weigh in, bring the full power of his office to bear, and resume transfers. It's the only solution. What mystifies, I think, people in the, in the outside world, and very possibly in America itself, is how this country that, that, that bore one of the most uh, remarkable constitutions has managed to get itself into a position where it doesn't seem to be able to deal with something which involves 133 prisoners, 86 of whom are free to go, but can't be sent anywhere. It, it's, it's certainly right, and that's precisely why, at this stage, we need the, the president to intervene. The, the other branches of, of government clearly have failed on Guantanamo policy. The courts long ago slammed the doors on, on the cases of my clients and others at Guantanamo. And the, the legislative branch has used, in, has used the, the National Defense Authorization Act, the annual appropriation bill, as a vehicle to express its hostility towards Guantanamo policy. What remains, the only safety valve that remains is, is the president. He has the latitude in the legislative framework to mm -hmm. release prisoners, including the 86 that his administration has cleared for release. And just so your viewers know, that means that every national security agency with a stake in this affair, has unanimously declared that they can leave Guantanamo, and yet they languish there. Omar Farah, thank you very much indeed for joining us from New York. Cathy.